since we've had the majority of the SCADA system in, uh, we've reduced our inflow and in infiltration by 25% minimal, which means what we're doing now is a combination. It's just not the SCADA system that's going to help us identify how we're going to use that technology. We're now <coughs> identifying how stormwater is getting into our sewer pipes which is all that water goes to the treatment plant. And we're, so we're not trying to treat the sewer. We got all the stormwater from the streets, and then that's what causes that problem. So, so we're double dosing on that with the technology and uh, the, the, uh, the finding of inflow and infiltration that we've had in the past as technology to do. Thirdly, what we're doing, uh, just as a safe measure, we're building another 2 million gallon basin at Wickham Future. That can make sure that speaking of, we finally got EPP permitting. Uh, two weeks to begin that process. Uh, so hopefully we'll be done with that considerably through that process before the, before the rainy season gets here. So that's the difference with the water energy. Yes, John. Okay, I'm just going to batch up several so I don't take up a lot of time. The big one is, how do you get a copy of your SOP? And for that matter, why don't you publish it on your website? That's a big one. The second is, where in this SOP does it say, what was the procedure for checking to see if the employees had done their job correctly and checking at the pump station. From what you're saying, I, I haven't heard that there was one. Another question is, in that SOP, where does it say you're supposed to put signs out? Related to that, did you put a sign at Bay Tree Road Bridge, which is the first bridge below the leak site? No, and I can tell you that now, Mr. Corbin, because EPD requires it to be accessibility, and that Bay Tree Bridge is not accessible to the public. Sure, uh, Bornto uh, is highly accessible to the public, behind the salty snapper where there's not a bridge, but we know folks are back there on the four wheels and thing, and even a sign back there where, where the two rivers can join, and then at the ramp of 131. How about so that's, why, that's why we didn't go in Bay Tree. How about Bland Park, which is halfway in between Bay Tree and Gornto? What I'm going to tell you tonight, we, we, can take this, we can take this up at a later day. I don't want to spend all the time with the signs because you've been through that before with EPD. We followed every protocol of EPD uh, required us to do. <laughs> Uh, but I'd be happy to take that up, and we're always willing to, to look at other things we can do and expand where we put signs. But did you put a still, sign? Still to ask your question, we follow the protocol we're supposed to follow. Okay, well, I, then how do we get a copy of that protocol? APD, you're very familiar with them. Go to George EPD. We have to go to EPD to get the protocol for, that the Valdosta City is using. When we yes, because we have to answer. They're the regulatory agency for the state of Georgia. We have to answer to them. We, we, we have I think the point is we're, we're citizens here and we want you to do more than just what the state tells you. And we want you to do things for yes, us. Sir. You work for us, right? And I'm, and I'm, and we're, like you said, we're so don't people. just go by what the state tells you. Do what you wanted, what we want you to do for as citizens of, of this community, okay? And he's a citizen of this community. He's saying we want the signs where we need to see them. Absolutely. We don't want them just where the regulation says they have to be. I have to disagree with that whatsoever. I followed up with Mr. Porter by saying we were certainly looking at expanding that as we do. I mean, as, uh, with this bill, we followed the protocol. We well, that's what I'm saying. That's all you did. You did not do what we want, what we need. You I'm followed right. the protocol. I'm writing down additional signs. I have yeah, we see the right, right. right. speaker. That's exactly what I just said to you, and you, you, you told me right back. Well, yeah. that's all I want to do is follow the protocol. I just do what the, what the government tells me. Tell that we're going to add signs, I promise. <laughs> As a result of this meeting, will there be a list of actions and then the follow through on that at a later date? Yeah, because I get it. It'll take minutes right now. Okay. You've heard some of them. That catch basin thrills me. And I love that. Like, that's, okay. ten, that's a 10 million gallon catch basin that is overkill. And it I'm is. thrilled about it. What that. doesn't thrill me is the whole, I'm still stuck on because that's what I do for a living. Documentation. Because again, I'm, I am concerned that at the end of the day, you can throw up my job and I'll send money at this. But if you don't have these folks trained, and if you don't have training and people and retraining yearly, and if you don't have the right stuff in your procedures, you're just going to have another problem again and again. And I'd like to take the time. To, to show you something that's kind of interesting. I lived, I moved here to Hamilton County four years ago. And I want to show you my legs. Once I started 
taking showers in the well system off the Wipaluchi River. That's my life. I didn't have a spot on them until I moved to Hamilton County. And I, I live now closer. I live two blocks from the Wipaluchi today. And before I moved to where I am today, I lived four blocks. Now, my, and I know, I have, this is one neighbor that, Jean, finds bottled water. I have another neighbor, Ace Smith, who lives on 44th. He's on a fixed income, and he's going and getting distilled water. He takes showers in distilled water. He doesn't use his well water to take showers. Now, that's just two that live a half a mile from me. How many more people do we have that are fixed incomes in that basin within two, three, four blocks of the Wipaduchi that, that are having this problem? Can we move forward? Any other questions? Ms. Barber, if I may. Yes. Uh, at our meeting today, unfortunately, it came to light and found out that uh, our Florida Health Department and DEP has been alternating daily water testing along the Wicca River. And um, as of the test that was pulled the 6th, 6th January, the 6th of January at the uh, Valdosta Highway, um, I don't know, Madison, Valdosta Highway 31, 445, um, had an extremely high level of coliform in the coli. And it, and as today's results came back, uh, we just got those results from yesterday's testing at 150 at the Belleville Bridge. Apparently the flow or some of the flow has reached dangerous levels there. Um, we have, like I said before, Madison County, Hamilton County, this year's local space for emergencies. We're fixing to probably have a special call meeting to extend hours again and uh, in the next few days but we've had this will be our third health advisory of this field that, that our Florida Department of Health and DEP has issued for Florida on the Wicked Future River. <coughs> I'm assuming that they will probably have a health advisory issue tonight. Yeah, the health, the, I, I was just texting the health department and they said there's going to be another advisory come out tonight because of what they found Monday and what and, and Tuesday. So this this is an unusual event because normally within a day or two it comes to us and, and uh, it's over with, but this isn't that way. It's coming in slow and, and you know, so for almost a month now uh, we're having to issue these advisories to stay out of the river. So on January the 6th the DEP data <coughs> was for E. coli 7,776 parts per, per 100 milliliters, and it was at 4,500 for coliform. Safe levels in Florida, I don't know how to answer Georgia, I believe there's anything above 400 for coliform, is that right? 400. And 800 for E. coli. And uh, today at 150, the results was 20, 2,700 at 150 today, <coughs> which is uh, about a third of that <coughs> 31 to that one six. So we, we're, we're concerned about with this the way the water flow is in the river right now. It's just very, as you know, the river's low. You know, very little flow going on. Some of our concerns is a lot of this material may even be trapped in some of the, the low-lying areas or slews in the along the river banks. And as we have these rain events, I had I live two miles from the river, State River Six, Madison County. I had an inch of rain Friday night and I'm thinking that the city of Al Austin had something similar to that. So it just seems to me what I'm seeing here when we have a, a, a rain event right now of an inch or so you start to see more of this release being done and you start seeing these higher levels. And my fear is that, and, and our DEP and Florida Park Health is committed 
and they're going to be testing daily until they get, you know, they, they tested eight days with no levels of high bacteria, and then they, the second time they lifted the advisor on the second event. And now it appears we're going to go into another advisor. For those of you that live in Madison, Hamilton, Swanee, you know, prepare this going to be probably issue tonight. And I don't know how many days that advisor will be up until we get those same levels again. But then my concern is, I don't need to drag this out, is what's behind it. You know, uh, this, this may be a long-term event for us, and, and we're having to tell our folks, don't drink it, don't get in it, don't you know, test your wells, and do all this stuff. And uh, I, I just, I'm trying to show you or point out the, the impact that this has on everybody. And uh, we've got a lot of, we've invested a lot, of and I'll just pull it out there and clap that we would hopefully, we would expect the city of Mount Austin to assist us in recouping some of the costs we've had to incur to uh, monitor our, and help our citizens. So just put that as an ask. About uh, personal costs. People who have to buy water because they can't drink water in the room. The compensation for that at all? Is there anything in plan? I just, the kids, you can't just go right to school with the pool, you can't observe it on the other side of the door from the pool water. I heard all sorts of things today and last week, earlier today. Could you please explain? Who the contractor was, what exactly happened, how big the hole in the pipe, or whatever, where apparently a lot of more sewage came out of wherever it came out of. Explain exactly who was there, what happened, and how that nobody knows it. Because I hear this stuff, and I'm sure a lot of people do, but nobody really, a lot of people don't really know what happened. Thank you. Yeah, we're. We engaged with, with a uh, technology contractor from, uh, uh, late last year, mid last year, to work on a credit system. The name of the company is EMC, and, uh, and they've done a great job of implementing the technology that we've asked them to deploy for us. And uh, I should talk to this, but uh, we're, the, in, uh, <coughs> we're in uh, Alabama. We're supposed to do a lot of that. The, uh, and the reason no one knows the mammals, because it's in the woods, it's probably quarter mile, half mile, half mile, half mile off. Uh, if, you, uh, if you're from Dot Austin, you probably know where the like, depot and uh, Target is. So if you go behind those stores, it becomes wooded back in that area. So if you go back in there a few hundred feet, several hundred feet, that's where the mammals is. And the manhole, there's a manhole on one side of the creek, and then there's a manhole on the opposite side of the creek. So that manhole right there, uh, before it goes across the creek, is where the top came off the manhole. You know, the manhole lid, and that's where it came out. All the stuff just came out of one manhole. That's the one story. manhole. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just want to make a second. I've been sitting here listening to this, I've been coming to these meetings with you guys, and I've been a part of it. Uh, and I don't mean to take up your time. <coughs> you know, you talk about communication, you're talking about, you know, getting the word out, and things going on here. You're going to have the last meeting, uh, you're going to go for a fun meeting. Now, I know you guys, Mr. Mayor and Council, because you all take it on the chin, I feel like you do, but you're not taking it any harder than any of us. Thank you very much. You hear it. And you're talking about the manhole in the woods. The first email I got from Mr. Barber, it said just that. There was a spill in the woods, a heavily wooded area behind Target. In that email, there was not one mention of a sugar creek. Mm -hmm. Any more way, anything as bad as it would be in the woods. And we get that email at 12. Hour before we get to finish, like 21. So as social media started lighting up with all that, I'm defending the fact that, I mean, yes, it's a bad spill. 
para no creer que se tiene un muro de eso. Como la misa. That wasn't the case. Um, you know, lack of better words, I had crap on my face when the meeting came out in the press. So from what I'm hearing from you, you know, you guys and uh, people here in the audience tonight, they just want to count and go. You know, you guys send me out to work on a manhole, and you send me out to work on a pole and a closure. I think you had a supervisor there. Somebody needs to be there to answer for these mistakes that you made. And I'm not picking on you guys. I'm not here to show out or anything. I'm just speaking the truth. This is where we are. This is the reality of it. Uh, it's time for something to be done. Accountability. I know you guys invest a lot of money into this thing. Uh, I can probably just for you guys, for you guys sitting next to me. I'm not here as much as I do. And, and it's just, it's never been, I think, in one time. So, I've been 30 years, 32 years in the uh, doing the same thing. Uh, pick it up and try to hold them accountable for what I do for a living. You know, four radio stations. I followed this since out nine in the flood and then crumbled the <coughs> infrastructure. Um, to this point today, <laughs> being kept informed all along the way, being one of the people on the release, and being one of the city's official release, my demand. I couldn't be more impressed with the effort and I just went through this transition over the last two and a half weeks to Martin Head meetings with every single person. And every single one right now, the personnel will tell you that I asked this question. Can I walk this earth? Can I walk into that meeting and show these people that we're doing everything we can possibly do? Now, I would suggest that as we get these new updated meter reading, electronic meter readers, that we don't need people to walk the streets anymore, that I want them to walk the 125 crossings we have of a waterway in our sewer system. But I want them to put eyes on it as well. That I didn't want this job if we didn't pass FLOSS and I couldn't commit $40 million to the further improvements on the system because I need to come up with $40 million over the next four years to keep our promise to you guys and the aggressive timeline that we're on in repairs of this. That uh, I can't release them a little bit. I do that with um, get parking trouble a little, we kind of done a little before we got approval because we wanted to start that process and now we officially have an approval and that 10 million gallon catch basin will assure us that, uh, that nothing. We're two miles from the river now and that catch basin will assure us nothing you know, that river at the treatment plant on the wrong angles. We continue to rehab on those for, for probably the next decade, you know that. You know how many there are, you know what we're doing. Additional signage is a great idea as well, John. Um, you want me to hop off the bridge? I'll just leave one well, I know, but I want you to, to come back to us all that have decontaminated well, which is the vintage over, and say that the city of Del Doxa is going to support the effort to reimburse us for the well decontamination. I am four wells, but these folks all live where I am, and they're all going to have to have wells that need decontaminated. It's not a trivial process. Okay. That slide had wanted to address a few minutes ago to expound a little on what Ms. Davis had said. We refer to ourselves in Madison County probably <coughs> as fiscally constrained, but in reality we are poor. Our, that is because we're poor, and there. you know that. Uh, our residents, most of them, don't have the money to pay for the water filtration systems. We had people today who spoke in Madison. They pay anywhere from 45 to 6,000 and above just to get the initial system. That doesn't include replacing the different parts that have to be replaced yearly or however often they need to. When you start talking about buying water and uh, it's costing our county right now several thousand just to do the testing for the people because of course we're doing it for free. So for them, because they shouldn't have to pay for it. But when you look at all the different areas that the people have to try to cover to make sure that they're not using contaminated water, a lot of them don't have the money for it. And because of that, truthfully, a lot of them who have lived close to the river for many, many years, they don't bother. And we don't know what they may at times deal with as a result of the water. But they know they don't have the money. They've always been there or they've been there for a number of years and 
they, they say another spill and they just don't bother. But the bottom line, and I think with most things, the bottom line just comes down to money and it hits a lot of our residents very hard along that area. I have a question. I, as far as accountability goes, when these spills happen, are you, is, is anybody fined? I mean, it seems like, is there anything, like you just spilled X amount of raw sewage, does the EPA fine the city? Is there any kind of... The EPA, EPB can fine the city. But that is not like... Automatic. It's not, it's not automatic, automatic or is it based on the gallon or whatever. It's, they, they do have that authority to... to uh, have they? Have they ever? I've been here, I've been city manager two years. Um, since I've been here two years, no, that we've not had We've been going on for a long time. Before I've not been happening, so. We're, we're, under, we're under the similar, um, still from the with, uh, with uh, EPD. Uh, but um, as far as I can remember back, I don't think we've had a fine. They, you know, what they've done in lieu of fines is they added more projects to keep the problem from happening. They, they'll, they'll do that many times. <laughs> Rather than a dollar value, they'll add more projects to the consent order. How will the notification system change? Notifying, notifying us downstream. And the reason I ask, a year or two ago, my, oh yeah, we have one place in North Carolina, my last playing around the water, we kayak a lot, Scott, like you do, and enjoy the water, get the truck, I'll have a text from a local official, stay out of the river. The spill happened four or five days prior. We just found out that day. And I've been in the river playing in my lab and having a good time on the North Carolina River. How will the notification system change to guarantee that everyone, even those who don't have email and internet access on the river, know about your spills? Because that, to me, is criminal, criminal neglect because you're endangering their lives. I mean, because you're in that water, animals are in that water, farm animals are in that water, and no one knows. I don't think I have an answer to that. You ask to anybody on that email list, you can get it by phone, you can get it by um, notification. You get more specific with it as well. Um, if it's anywhere near a waterway, obviously we don't want an egg on anybody's face. We had um, one person in the campground to get a reverse 911 call, and we have quite a few people in the campground have no internet. <coughs> so we're trying to take care of ourselves, and we're trying not to be dependent upon any government organization, because we do, you know, with the exception of a few people, um, you know, a lot of the people in Hamilton County, it's a 4K. So the, the folks that can help, I think, are helping <coughs> to do the job of it. But there has to be several ways of getting their advice. Mr. Parker, is anybody here from Madison County? Uh, do y'all live within how far of the river? Three miles. Did y'all get our code red announcements on your telephone? Yes. Okay. So we have a code red system in Madison County in our emergency management can uh, pinpoint target areas in the county, put out a, a blast phone call, uh, automated message that, that gives those type of warnings. Well, I'm glad good. to see that in our county, that, I think that system worked pretty good. And uh, so I don't know if Hamilton or Swanee has code red or similar type of announcement notification system. Y'all are yeah. relying a lot on the systems to tell you communications. I'm assuming that their battery or generator backup in their in the event of a catastrophic electrical outage, they all are on battery or generator backup. Yeah. That would be to purchase more and more generators for backup to that. My other question is, and I don't know if you can do it in this particular area, but all right, have y'all looked at uh, high injection uh, well well pumps for overflow of the sewage? They do um, use them in Collier County, in South Florida. They pump 35,000 feet down in, into the aquifer, but scientists have said by the time it comes out in the ocean, it's purified. Yeah, now that's a uh, pretty uh, wild statement. To do it. Yeah, we only allow to be surface discharge. I know down out in Gainesville, Florida, they have a deep well injection. They actually, instead of surface water injection, they dug a well 3,500 feet, and they're pumping it in the ground 3,500 feet. Uh, you know, some pros and cons, some folks are pro to that, some folks don't think they, uh, that should be happening either, so, you know, still some science needs to be done up in this area to make sure it's on right. soil condition. Yeah, well, they use a bubble system in South Florida. 
Yeah, they inject them into the uh, brackish water. So going into the lower lower floor, then, I don't know how yeah, you lower. can do that more up. Yeah, I don't know. Sure. You get up higher in the certificate, it'd be hard to get them. So well, whatever you can do to communicate with us, get us some information, and support us, uh, and me as a citizen, I greatly appreciate your help. I have a question about those three alerts in Florida. The first one was put out on the 10th when all anybody knew was there was spill. Okay, better safe than sorry. The second one was put out when, as I understand it correctly, Valdosta found an elevated bacterial level at US 84, which I believe <coughs> we heard earlier is right next to the state line. Uh, does anyone in Valdosta know how many river miles from US 84 to the state line? Uh, 27, or about three days. And is anybody measuring at the intermediate boat ramps to see how the sewage is moving down the river? Valdosta, for example, is Valdosta doing that? No. We have uh, an answer from Tom Murdy of Swanee River Water Management District. We have done that, yeah. As you know. <coughs> Did you do it at Knight's Ferry in Lancaster? We haven't done it consistently, but we have done it when a, when a spill, you know, when a, when a location popped up, at, you know, either at 84 or at 31, and we looked upstream and downstream in conjunction with DOH and DEP on specific days. Yeah, on specific days. And we did a site. We did a OK, and with the Knight's Ferry in Lancaster, yeah. USA 4 and State Line, but Valdosta has not. The bus basically flushed its sewage down the river. No, no sir. I'm going to have to interrupt you there. When Mike, just like the gentleman here said, when we got that hot spot at Mike's Creek, we went down there. And we took our crew down there. They took samples. They did the lab work. We took it to a lab in Thomasville where the other folks were going to say, oh, they're just making the numbers up. The numbers that you were posting on your Facebook were much higher than the independent lab and our own folks said. So I really can't let you stand there and not say we hadn't been out there and do it. And you have ever returned that data in response to the open records request I fired a week ago? I will have to talk to the city clerk about that. You can file it with me, sir. I asked you in your office earlier. And I gave you all the data. You asked me for the data, every 